All right, so uh, today we're going to talk about inheritance, but before we get to that, I want to talk about how we can start to split up our programs because they're getting larger and larger as we add classes and things like that. Typically, we keep a single uh, cl a class in its own file. Every file has a single class in it, and we keep our main program has the main program in it, and as we add classes, each class has its own file associated with it. When you get to Rails, you'll see that every, every class, every uh, database table, everything like that is split up into its own file. And so we need a way of, of referring to those classes in our main program. And so this is a lot like HTML and CSS. We keep our CSS in a different file. And in our main HTML file, what do we have to do to let it know we have a CSS file out there? We link it. We have a linking HTML tag that says, go get this file. So we have a similar thing in, in Ruby. And so let's, let's take our class, our student class here from, that we did last week. And I'm going to cut this out. And we're going to go make a new file. Um, actually, I'm going to rename this one first because we like to typically keep our names of our files the name of the class, just, just for convention. It doesn't have to be that way. So I'm going to, uh, sorry, I'm going to rename this guy, refactor it, uh, to student main dot rb, just so it's different. And that allows me now to have a file <laughs> called students, or student dot uh, RB. So a single student is a single class, and we'll put our class in here. All right. So this is still a Ruby program. If I try to run this, what's going to happen? Uh, nothing. Nothing. It, it runs, it creates a class, throws it away, and quits. doesn't do anything with it. It's just fine. So in my main student main program, I need to tell it that it's going to utilize some code that's in a different file. So we say require, and I guess we have to spell it right, require, and we give it the name of the file that we want to include. Now, unfortunately, in Ruby 1.9 1 1 and up, they changed the way require works, and you have to use a dot slash to say I'm in the same directory as my student main program, and I want to re load in student.rb. So what that says is go out and get the file student.rb and make it as if I'm putting it right here. Same thing as a CSS file. We're including, or C sharp, you use uh, an include statement or a using statement. Uses a library, kind of the same thing. All right, so uh, let's see if this runs now. I, don't, I shouldn't have to do anything else. When this finally says, to call the student.new, this file has already been loaded, so it should be fine. Let's see if this actually works. Uh, it's not going to work because this uh, is in a double quote, and so what does it do to slashes and double quotes? It escapes it, so that turn that's why it's turning blue here. So it's, I'm going to have to use single quotes in here. Right, so let's run my student main now. And there it worked. Look at that. Beautiful. Slash S is space. No, it's a nothing. Oh, okay. Um, it would turn it into just a, an S, and you'd lose the slash is what you'd use. Lose, which, yeah. So what this means, this is the current directory that I'm in where this main student main program is. So they actually are in the same folder on my disk, and so the dot slash I have to use. Or there's another method called require relative, um, which I never use. So uh, I believe I can just say student.rb here. Let's see if that works. Same thing. Then I don't have to use the dot slash. Uh, is that 
it's relative to where my current file is. So it's I like that. That's a little bit nicer. I'm sorry? It looks in the same directory. It looks in the same directory, or I could give it, you know, dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, just like you would in CSS included files or for images, you know, you're relative to your to your current folder, your current file. So that's a little bit easier. All right, so that's all you have to do to break your program up into multiple files. And that keeps it easier for maintenance capabilities. My student class only has student in it. The student file only has my student class in it. All right, any questions on that? Yes. Like, like not relative. I'm trying to figure out why there would be a reason to specifically say oh, yeah. it's in the same file unless you could do stuff from somewhere else. I could. I want to say it, it's in my C drive slash Ruby slash bin slash something. Okay. You know, if I want to be relative to something specific. Uh, or a full path, right? All right. Any other questions on that? Got my herd of students. All right, we're done with students then for now. All right, then we're going to start talking about inheritance a little bit. Um, now this, what the subject that we're going to talk about is not required for the books assignment that you have next, next week. So don't think you have to use inheritance in that case, all right? This is just another object-oriented uh, concept that you have to understand when we get to classes. Now we've used inheritance already when we change the 2S method. Remember that every, every class that I created already had a 2S method assigned to it, right? And it used the one that was assigned at the top level of the Ruby hierarchy, which was the object class. And so if we wanted to change that, we would write our own, and we called that what? What do we call that when we changed how an internal method was being used? Overriding. Very good. We're overriding how this method is being used. We're changing it to our own purposes. So inheritance is, is uh, that kind of a concept. We can write methods that inherit, or classes, sorry, that inherit attributes from its parent classes. And this is a lot like the CSS attributes, right? I can have uh, a header that could, in could inherit from it its body tag the styles on its parent. Uh, if you're in JavaScript, we have the whole DOM object that inherits things from its parent uh, object. So this concept of inheritance, you as a person inherited some traits from who? Mama, Mama and Papa, right? You got different traits from your parents who they got different traits from their parents, etc. Now, do you get traits from your children? Yes. So <laughs> you might get you might get habits from your children, but you're not going to get a trait. You're not going to change your hair color because your kid has red. Uh, you know that it doesn't go the other way. It, it inherits from your parent down to your children. All right. So think of when think in terms of genealogy when you think of inheritance. So we're going to start uh, to try to explain this by using, we're going to create an animal class. And this is kind of a popular way of, of teaching inheritance. I like it anyway. Um, so an animal might have some different attributes. What, what kind of attributes does an animal have? Color, all right. So let's make these attri accessibles just because uh, it's easier. So we have a color. We're going to give. We're going to be a, a, a game warden in a zoo. So we're going to name all of our animals, right? We got to have cute names for our animals. So we're going to have a name. Can you just rename them all 
No. No, no. All right, so we have a color and a name. Uh, let's start with that. So we need, what's the first method we write when we create an animal class? Initialize, def, initialize, spelled correctly. And we might pass in its color and its name. Actually, I'm going to put name first just because that sounds better to me. Uh, name and color. And how do we store that in this class then? Instance variables, very good. So at name equals name, at color equals color. And now we've got <clears throat> how many methods are defined now in this class? Okay, so we have a discrepancy five or three or a whole bunch. Yeah, a whole bunch is a little vague, so we'll go with five or three. So it's either five or three. Okay, good. That's that's what I'd like to see. Five is the right answer because why? This attractor creates two methods for each of these symbols. It creates a getter and a setter for color, and a getter and a setter for name. And we already have the initialize, so that's two, four, five methods. All right. Just because they're not defined like this, this is actually writing those methods in memory when it executes this code. It is actually generating that code dynamically in memory. All right, so let, how do we create a new animal? All right, tiger equals animal.new, and we're going to pass it what? Its name, tiger, and... Uh, the color is orange. All right, so if I want to look at that, I'm going to say, uh, let's put out my tiger.inspect, see what that looks like. Look at that. Those are all my tigers. That's not quite right. So we need to run the right guy. So my animal has a name and a color associated with it. All right, so that's an animal. But with inheritance, we can do so much, uh, so much more and be more specific about what type of animal we, we might have. So I can create another class that's more specific. You, do you guys all know the, uh, the, the uh, types of, the Latin types of names where they come up with like homo sapiens? So it starts out with kingdom. Right? We're all uh, either a plant, animal, or mineral kingdom, or something like that. And then it goes to what? You guys don't remember all those. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. I have no idea why I remember that. but that's So the last two, we go genus and species. So we're homo is the genus and species is sapiens. So that, those are all the same type of inheritance that's going on. Right? We're inheriting... All the way up, an animal has certain distinctives that are different than a plant. Right, David? <laughs> Have I lost David already? <laughs> I lost him. So the, shut, shut he shut down just right there. The, the point I'm trying to get across is this inheritance. We inherit certain traits from our parents. So let's create a, something more specific than just an animal, and we'll call it a tiger. All right? So a tiger, could we want to inherit from its parent, which is going to be an animal. So we do that by, by saying on the definition of the class uh, line, we say less than an animal. All right? So what this means is this class is going to inherit all of the properties and methods that the animal class created already. So by definition, a tiger already has uh, a name and a color associated with it. It's already got those. Those are every animal in my zoo is going to have a name and a color. But a tiger might have something a little more specific, all right? Like it might have a, a method called... Uh, um, speak, 
and it might say grr. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we want to return the string grr when my ti when my tiger speaks. All right. So instead of creating my tiger from the animal class, I can create it from my tiger class now. So my animal is now going to be a tiger dot new and we pass the same values because it's inheriting from the animal class. So it has the same values. So let's run this now and see what I get. All right, I get the same values. It has a name and a color as instance variables that it inherited from the animal class. It got all of this. It's as if I put all of that code inside of this class. Okay? Everybody see that? Any questions on that? Okay. Yes. Yeah, I would uh, most likely put this class in a different file as well. Right. Just to break it up. Keep them separate. But for this purposes, I don't want to keep bouncing back and forth. So. Not quite. No, that's a little different. Um, this is a class, a baby class from its parent class. It's not within this class. It's a separate class on its own, but it has all of these properties already built for it. It inherited those from its parent, which was the animal class here. But it's got some more specific things that my if I if I create a frog from my animal class, it's not going to say grr. It's going to be saying something else, right? So I can tell my tiger to speak, speak, and what is it going to print out? Grr, grr, my tiger spoke. A speak is a method. The inspect only returns the instance variables. And we don't have a, uh, a way of printing this out yet. We'll get to that and we're out of time. We'll, we'll make a 2S method to print out what it looks like and things like that. All right? So, and we'll build some more animals that come from the animal class. All right. That's it.